Hello Salesforce Ohana. In this video, I will be going over how to default values in flows, pick lists, radio buttons, and multi-select pick lists. We'll be diving into how to do this with regular choices, record choice sets, and pick list choice sets. Big shout out to Luke Friedman's blog post, which goes over how to default with these special cases. This video explanation was a request from one of you in the Salesforce community. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. All right, let's get into it here. So we're going to open up our screen flow. I have a couple different examples that we're going to walk over. The pick list, radio button, and multi-select. So we're going to be checking out how the default values interact with each of these. For these default ones that I have here, I added in choice, regular choice selections for all of them. So let's go ahead and debug this and let's see what happens, what they look like just from default. You'll see how that comes to play in the second part of this. So when we look here in the pick list, we see that the first value is actually defaulted to hot, even though if we go back to our flow, we didn't set a default value. That's because the pick list only takes the first available value that is in here. When we look at the radio buttons, we see that none of these items are selected. We have to select one of these to have any item selected at all or defaulted. So that's one of the big differences between the pick list and the radio buttons. For the pick list, it's going to default to the first value regardless of if you have anything defaulted. And for the radio buttons, it will select, it will not select an item until you pick one. Moving on to the multi-select, we see that nothing is actually selected here. We have to actually click something and it's control click to actually pick one of these items. Down here it's record choices, so we'll get into that after we review these really quickly and add some default values and see what comes from it. Let's close that out. Go back to our screen flow. Looking at our pick list, we see that we haven't set any default text values in here. So let's go ahead and select cold, and we're hoping that cold will get picked first. For the radio button, same thing, we're gonna use the default value. Let's pick cold again, even though it's in a different position, that's fine. For our multi-select, we still have the same default value dropdown, but the problem that we're seeing here is if we clicked one of these, that's fine and great, it'll select you know, warm first, but what if we wanted to select multiple items at the same time? This is one of the major problems with multi-select default values is that you can't select, you know, hot and cold at the same time. Let's pick hot and see what, uh, what comes out of that. Here we go, save and debug. And for pick list values, we see that it defaulted to hot now instead of going to cold. For the radio button, cold is selected, so that worked out great. And for the multi-select pick list, we can see that hot is highlighted here, even though it's not like highlighted blue, it is still highlighted as if we clicked out of it. Um, but we are not able to select multiples for defaulting. So that is how defaulting works for when we're using regular choice selections. This is information that we put in. When we are using record choice sets and pick list choice sets, record choice sets means we're querying the system and getting some records and putting them in a pick list selection or radio button selection. A pick list choice selection means we're going into an actual object and pulling pick list values from one of the pick lists that we've created. When we look at the default value when we've selected a record choice for our radio buttons or any of the pick lists, we can see that when we go down to the default, there's none available. And that's because these default values are only allowed for choice options. So we can see that these hard-coded choice values are in here, but when we go to the dynamically generated ones, they are not there. And that's because the system would not know which one to pick because they are dynamically generated. The same thing when we look at the pick choice, there's no way for this to be defaulted, at least right now, because the options can dynamically change. So it can't give you a default value. When we look at this inside of the actual debug of our flow, we can see that, hey, none of these are selected in here, even though we're getting options. 
And same thing for our pick list choice set down here. None of these are selected um, by default whenever we run our flow. Knowing that limitation, you have a couple options to actually get past this. Um, you know me, I don't like to just end without pushing the limits of the system. So there are some ways to get around these limitations, but they're not as pretty. And I will kind of give you a little glimpse into what I'm doing. All right, so it's time to take a peek at the other items on this flow and the other screen, which we're kind of using to get around that default option based on the limitations of the record and pick list choice sets. So we're seeing some funky stuff in here already. Let's go ahead and run this really quickly before I get into how it works. I have a default opportunity ID. So this is the original screen where we aren't able to default some of the values in the record choice set. Do take note, there are four choices in here right now. And for the opportunity stage, there's a certain number of values in here. So I'm gonna hit next and the rest of my flow is gonna run. And we are going to start seeing that some of the values actually did get defaulted in here. So we're seeing this United Oil uh, Gasoline 300 kilowatts being selected. Over here, we are seeing close one getting selected. This is a pickless choice set, so we're seeing that getting dropped in first. And then for a multi-select, we are also seeing that, hey, this is uh, close one is being selected. What we're actually doing is adding an additional option into these input fields so that it mimics a way of defaulting the value. If we actually look at this pick list, which may be the simplest one to understand, uh, we actually added in another close one value, even though it's the same exact thing. Same thing with this record choice selection. These two values are duplicated. If we look on the actual object itself, I think it's this one here, there's, uh, there's actually only four of them in here, even though we're showing in our flow and uh, five items to be selected. And then for a multi-select pick list, just showing that close one is at the top and close one is at the bottom. So how does this all work? If we go to our screen flow, what we did is add in a record choice at the beginning. And it's a very special record choice. I'll trace it back in a moment. But we add in a record choice at the top, and this allows for the defaulting of the values to uh, work because this is an actual choice and it is not a pick list or record choice set. When we look at um, this radio button, once again, same thing. Here's our record choice set. And in this section here, it's a regular choice. And when we look at our defaulting, it's going to select this choice option. Same thing for a pick list. We can you know, say that this is going to be defaulted. And then the same option for the multi-select. We still aren't able to put in multiples at a time, but we are able to default into one. I think the multi-selects are probably the most limiting out of all of these. Let's trace some of this back and then we'll get into some of the extra steps that I have in here. If we look at this one more time, let's start out with the default pick list stage. Uh, this is an actual choice. So we will go into our different choices and we can see here that we have this default stage uh, choice selection. The label of this specific choice is actually a formula that we generate. Even though the value could be anything, we have the value being the same as the label because we want close one to equal close one. If we look at this formula, what we're doing here is checking to see if an opportunity has a stage altogether. If it does, then we are displaying the stage name in that text value. If it doesn't, it says select stage. Um, so this may not work the best for opportunity stage. For their fields or pick list options that may be optional or have no values, this would be the default answer um, that you would get in here. And then when we want to trace back to the opportunity get, we can see that we're selecting an opportunity and then the formula kicks off as soon as we have an opportunity and we're just getting that stage name, whatever it actually is. I'll go into this one in one moment. 
So now once we get that opportunity, whatever value it has, if it has one, it displays it at the top. If it does not have one, it would display it as a select an option and you can do some sort of additional error handling in the flow to send them back if they continued through with select an option or something like that. So that was for the pick list value set and how we kind of solved that one. For the record choice set, it's actually a little bit more complicated. So in the end, what we want to do is display the primary opportunity product. We assume that there's only one primary opportunity product and the choice is very similar to the last one. We're going to be calling a formula. If we go to that specific formula, we can see that I'm doing some sort of check on record exists. If it does exist, then I'm displaying the name. If it does not exist, I'm displaying select product. Now for that opportunity line item get, if we look at it over here, we're filtering down opportunity products by opportunity ID and getting the primary one and storing that one in a record. Now where the decision logic has to come in is basically we need to check if that record exists or not. Because we can't do formula calls on something like uh, name exists or name is blank. As soon as you start to call in flow an object that doesn't exist, you'll get a bunch of errors. So you'll need to do an additional check if you're doing record choice sets to assign some sort of value to do your checking. So this record exists, I'm setting it to true if the record actually exists, if this evaluates to true, if the get opportunity line items is not null. Record exists is defaulted to false. So if the default outcome, if it does not exist, then it'll just default it. If it does exist, it'll set it to true and be sent to our screen flow. From there, uh, the rest is history. Our choice label will be defaulted at first, and then our record choice set values will show afterwards. So let's kind of save this and walk through this one. We're going to do two examples, uh, one with opportunity products and another one without them. So I'm going to grab this ID and plug that in here. We're seeing that, hey, we have values for our record choice set and we know our opportunity has stages. So we're going to hit next just to see it. Bam, we can see that, hey, this is defaulted to the first one, even though it is added in values already. And then for, you know, we've already seen this, but close one is selected here. Let's go to finish and let's change our inputs. And this opportunity does not have any products. So what we're expecting to see as we run this, once we go to the next page is that we should see something that says select a product because we don't have any options to select from. And this one is closed one already. So uh, this gets defaulted here. Same thing, closed one gets put on the top there. All right, I hope this was helpful explaining some of the considerations when you're using flows with pick lists, record choice sets and some of the limitations you could face. This video came from a request from one of you in the YouTube community. If you want a concept explained, leave a comment down below. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.